Hi guys, I hope y'all are doing well. I want to talk with you about something and it was something that, you know, has just been dropped in my spirit and I want to change and I want to share that with you. And it's called, they wouldn't tolerate their own behavior. They would not tolerate their own behavior. And so there are people when they do things, they know better. Don't think for one second that the person who is being uh, unfaithful doesn't know what's wrong. Don't think the person that is doing hurtful and deliberate things to you don't know that they're doing it. You know, you may not know, they may not know certain things at first, but there are certain basic uh, considerations from one human to another that we all know. We all learn from a little age not to take things that don't belong to us, not to hit people, not to be mean, you shouldn't spit, you shouldn't throw things. We learn, please, thank you, and excuse me. All right? Now, there may be some people they don't learn that. They learn everybody's supposed to say, please, thank you, and excuse me to them, but not to, but it's not the other way around. And these are people that grow up to be entitled and privileged. And they are the individuals that the Bible talks about in Revelation chapter 3 and, and 11. They say, I have need of nothing because they're rich and they have need of nothing, but they don't realize that they are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So a person can have everything, but their character and how they are, they don't realize that in the eyes of God, they are wretched, poor, miserable, blind, and naked. And so that may be those type of individuals, okay? And it does not only apply to people who are wealthy and think that they're better than other people, but just people who just may think, you know, I'm good. I'm fine. You're not. <laughs> so, but we live according to God's word and what he commands us. And so we want to, I want to talk about this because one thing that happens in the house of God is that there are many believers that continue to stay in relationships that are keeping them stagnant broken, lost, weary, rotten in the bones, blind. And because what are they not doing? They're not following the word of God. They're not following the word of God, which says to guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issue of life. They're not paying attention to the word that says death and life is in the power of the tongue and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So they continue to stay around people who speak death and evil things over them. They ignore the word of God that says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. You shouldn't be hanging around people that scorn you. You shouldn't be around people that's ungodly and want to be. Yes, we are among, we are here. The word of God says we are in the world, but we're not of it. So it doesn't mean you're going to be like, oh, you're a sinner. Stay away from me because we want to be a light. But we're talking about individuals that they want to be uh, mean and evil and do certain things to you and ridicule you and, and troubleshoot you. You know those kinds. Ah, uh -huh. gotta go. Wheels up. Wheels up. We're taking off. Sorry. And too often as Christians or believers in God, you've been learned to be. All right, guys, I don't know why I'm saying you've been learned. It is you've been taught. So you might hear it again. So excuse it ahead of time. Let's continue docile and a certain way and you have to understand there are situations in which you don't need to speak there are situations in which you don't need to respond because we see that example in Jesus he didn't respond to everything he did not he did not play into the hands of the Pharisees and the scribes when they were just trying to troubleshoot him and just nitpick he did not but there were things that he responded to there are times that he corrected them there were times that he put them in their place but often there are believers that's not doing that it's one extreme to another they either allow themselves to be trampled on or they're so overly aggressive that they are they have become you know, just they're wild and they are, they're so angry and bitter that they're jumping on everybody. So they don't have that perfect balance in so being led by the spirit of God. So, you know, when I need to speak and when I don't, but overall the Lord was not 
a softy. He was not a, a person that was fearful. And he walked in wisdom and he recognized and knew people. When the when he did that first miracle, when he turned water to wine, and, and I believe that was a miracle he had done. And suddenly there were all the, the people were, were just rejoicing and, and, and lauding him and oh my goodness. But he did not think much into it. The Bible said that because he knew what was in the heart of man. And I believe you'll see that in Mark chapter two. So what am I saying? As believers, we can't just be walking, being docile and not speaking and oh, praise God. No, there are times you got to say, what are you doing? Stop doing that. I don't appreciate that. Stop telling lies. I know that's not the truth. I will not accept that. All right. And you sometimes have to speak truth, but how you say it and do it is what matters. And when you're being led by the spirit of God, it's not going to be, uh, coming from a mean and malicious heart. But what happens is when people do wrong things, they will act like they don't know, but they do know. All right. They know it's wrong. That's why they do things in secret. They know that they're gossiping. That's why they don't speak. They don't say what they're saying. They, that's why they get together and secretly meet with other people or talk maliciously behind closed doors. The things that they're saying about a certain individual to other people, they will not say that to that person in the open. That's why you have people that will maliciously talk about someone, but then when they see them at church or where they see them in the halls, they're going, hey. That's why, so they know better. I give, give an example of a pyromaniac. People in your life that keep doing things over and over again, saying, oh, forgive me, forgive me, I'm sorry. And then you're going, oh, I forgive you. So if someone said, I give you an example of a pyromaniac. They said fire to the kitchen. And you being a believer, you're going, oh, oh, I forgive you. You can keep staying here. I love you and I forgive you. They light up your bathroom next. Oh, I love you and I forgive you. They light up the kitchen next. Oh, I love you and I forgive you. Until they light up the whole house with you and your family in it or just you in there. Okay? But what do you notice? Very rarely, if ever, has a pyromaniac ever burned up in a house. Because they know the danger of it. But they'll set fire to that house and make sure that they are in a safe place. So this goes to what I'm teaching today about they would not tolerate their own behavior. A pyromaniac who's burning your house down or burning any property is going to make sure that they are at a distance. Maybe when they start their first fire and put that... Uh, put the lighter fluid down or whatever. Maybe they were too close the first time and they realized if you're too close and you're holding that container, it's going to burn your hand. So after that, they learn their lessons. So they learn how to distance themselves and they learn exactly how to start the fires. They, they just keep doing it. That's how bad behavior exacerbate. The person does stuff. They may have a couple glitches. They may realize they got caught. Now, instead of learning the lesson, they learn how to get better at it. Very rarely does a pyromaniac burn in the house. They don't set the fire and they're in it. They set it and go to a safe place. And that is the thing with, that's an example I want to give you about people that they know better. They know the harm in what they're causing and doing. And that's why they make sure they do things in secret. That's why they make sure they do things in a covert way that they can't be found out and make sure they keep distance and just keep the lies going. They make sure they go out of town when they're going to do certain things. People, they don't know. Think of all the effort it takes to cheat and to do wrong. They know it's wrong. You can simply not do it. Because maybe they've been caught already. Maybe there's been a problem already. Maybe they have their, whoever they were with before they cheated and there were problems and issues. So they just leave that relationship and start fresh with somebody else. But now instead of changing, they're like, okay, I got to learn my lessons from the last one. I have to cheat out of town. They know better because they're going to put that man or woman's name. If she's a woman, she's going to put her down. If her name is uh, Michelle, he's going to put her in as Michael in the phone. If his name is Michael, she's going to put him down. She's going to put him down as Michelle in the phone. 
because they know better. They know better. That's why people lie when they're caught because they know that what they're doing is wrong. They know it. So they lie to cover it up. That's why people don't outwardly steal a uh, copy paper from work. It's not they if and if they get caught, they go, I, I just I didn't think it was wrong. Then why didn't you take it in front of everybody? They know better. So that's why they wait for everyone to leave or get to work early and take it. They know they shouldn't take those batteries from work, but they're gonna take it when no one is looking. That's why people look both ways and look around and sneak. And do things and they walk differently when they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. When that teen is sneaking out, they know better. That's why they wait for every day. Unlock the door and do all these things. Leave the window open a little bit so they don't make any sounds when they're going out. They know better. They know to wear a hoodie. They know to do all that stuff because they know better. So people that... So people know better. They know how they're supposed to treat you. They would not tolerate their own behaviors. Because a lot of times, these a lot of people that, I'll tell you something, individuals that spend a lot of time going around hurting people's feelings, just saying whatever they want to say, being just brash and, and just saying stuff and hurting people and telling you you're sensitive. The minute you say something, they fold, they buckle. It's like you put a, a put plastic next to heat. That's how they are. People that do wrong can tell you everything that's wrong about what you did. People that go around disrespecting other people and doing things wrong, they know everything about principles and how things should be done. They can tell you that. If you offend them, oh, they're not going to let you hear the end of it. Because they wouldn't tolerate themselves. They would not allow that. How do you know that? Because the minute you try to speak to them and you try to correct them, they buckle. They can't take it. They would have spent most of the relationship doing something wrong. And the minute you do something wrong, it's going to be capitalized on. But that's done for a certain reason. It's almost that they're happy you did that because now they have an excuse to continue to deny you what they were never going to give you in the first place. They will not tolerate themselves. And that's why a lot of times people that behave this way, they are going to have relationships with individuals who are opposite of them. The rude, brutish person is going to be in a relationship with a gentle and kind individual. The selfish and overbearing friend is going to end up being friends with someone who is kind and considerate because they would not tolerate themselves. Bullies are going to be, they, they pick on someone that's smaller than them. They're not going to pick on someone that's their size or bigger. And then they get with other people that are, are act as bullies, but they go in groups. So the bully is either going to fight a smaller person or they're going to come in groups together to maybe fight someone that's their size. Because they're cowards. They can't fight. Fight me by yourself. That's what you do. Fight someone your own size or bigger than you. But bullies are cowards. So a lot of times there's going to be an imbalance. So they're not going to pick on someone that's just like them, look like them, big and tall, their same size. They're not going to tolerate that. And so you have to understand that people that go through their life misbehaving and doing certain things, they can talk to you in your kind of way, but you cannot say anything back to them. They can cheat on you. And I'm not saying this is right, but if you cheat on that person, it's the end of the world. They can talk, oh, how the principal, all oh, principalities involved here. Yeah, I know they can tell you why that was terrible, but they've been cheating on you all along. But it's different because it's you. Again, 
I'm not saying it's okay to go and cheat. If the person's cheating, honey, well, if you feel like you got to go and cheat on them, if you got into that place that you did, that's a good sign that you just need to leave because you're hurting and now you're just going whatever. You know what I mean? You got to, you're saying when in Rome do as the Romans do, Romans do, but that's not good for you. But truth be told, you will find that they will leave you very quickly. They'll shut that door and they're going to set these high standards for you that they do not, they do not um, do themselves. And so these individuals, they would not tolerate themselves. But what is it? They know that you will. Because you've shown them the first time, the second time. You've shown them the first 10 years. And sometimes, guys, it could be your family. It could be your parent. So you have to think, you're trying to maybe change this person. But you got to realize they got a head start on you. By the time you get to a, a point that you're realizing how they are, you probably find out maybe about 10, 12 years old, kind of maybe start figuring out some things. But think about their age at that time. If you're you're realizing things maybe at the age of 10 in your, you know, 12, 14, you're starting to really see how your parent is, you have to think you've just been there 14 years. You have to think of maybe the age difference and nevertheless that they have been doing this for a long time. So then you add now you were 10 and now you're 20, now you're 30, and you're 40 and they still doing that? Your parent would have been behaving this way for about six centuries. I'm sorry, six decades. That means they're half into a century or a little over half into a century of their behaviors. Maybe a little under that. Okay, you give them a little bit of grace for the time that they were born. You will say, uh, give them that maybe they didn't start doing this till they was like, 20 but most likely they probably were doing stuff before that but let's give them 20 for the sake of just okay now your parent might be 70 years old that that's that's 50 years those are five decades which is ha into half a century because a century is a hundred years and they've still been doing this oh mm-mm don't even try to change them. You have to live your life and set the record straight for yourself and for your seed. Because then they get old and they start being a certain. And now they want to, they start to try to live vicariously through you and your family by bringing that same type of turmoil and craziness in your life. Now they trying to get your children and continue that you need to stop that unclean demonic spirit in the name of jesus it's not that you're calling them a demon but they are being led by a wicked evil spirit and it wants to now come and stain your seed and when you're saying no and you're you're making that that you're 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 cutting that you're setting that line Oh, it will fight because this is generational mess that feels entitled that, yes, I have a right to destroy your life. That's how it goes in our family. Oh, no. It's been, been the, the, the tradition that everybody fight and carry on over, and people galloping across the table and, 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 and hooves all up in the potato salad and fighting and slinging and doing all that stuff like a bunch of bobcat barracudas and seahorses. We're not doing that. I want to change the standard for my seed. But you know what? They will behave that way, but you can't go to them and do that. Because they won't tolerate, they would not tolerate themselves. A lot of times they don't even like themselves. As much as it seems like they do, they don't. Because if they did, they would not behave that way. You can't be happy and you're trying to make other people miserable. So you have to understand, guys, what you must understand and how you will find yourself being entrapped if you're not walking in the wisdom and the knowledge of God is that these individuals that's doing evil and doing wrong, they will pretend and say that they don't know and make you feel like you are overreacting and you just don't understand them and all these different things and guilt you when you start to take the steps to do what you need to do. But they know better. They would not tolerate themselves. They would not tolerate their own behavior. 
Because when it's dished out to them, they can't take it and they're going to get on the high horse and they're going to get on the soapbox and they'll be in the scriptures that they violate constantly to put you in check. They know better. They are not foolish. Just as I gave you that message, gave you that example, a pyromaniac don't burn himself or herself up in that house. They get out and get to a distance and start the fire. Destroy everybody else. Destroy other people's property. The liar is going to lie and hide things because they know better. But if you do it, it's going to be a problem. They know who they are and that's why they hide and they do it. They can speak in any manner to you, but they will not tolerate it. They won't tolerate it from you. Everyone has to respect them. Everyone has to think highly of them. Everybody else needs to be on time, but they can be late. You need to show up to when they tell you to show up, but they can show up or not show up when you need them. So they know better. There's just something that you have shown them throughout the years that they're like, I can do this to you. You will notice that people are this way, that are this way. They, they will often be friends maybe, or let's say siblings. They're going to, they're going to treat the people that treats them like garbage. They probably will have respect for them. If the, if you are one of several siblings and you're the nice one, or you're the one that's always considerate, they will mistreat you. And they will treat the one that is rude and disrespectful and inconsiderate quite well. Why? They are alike in spirit. They're alike in spirit. But you, you'll be treated differently. So that is why they will target, because that's what it is, that one child or that person at the job or that individual at the church or they will date a specific type of person because they're not gonna, they can't tolerate people that's like them. Mm -mm, not for, not for a, a partner. They would not tolerate themselves. That means others that are like them, mm -mm, they're not gonna do it. They're, they are not gonna tolerate you doing back to them as they do unto you. They don't believe in that. And so you're going to find, as I said, when they're doing wrong, they'll distance themselves from it. They'll deny the lie that they are told. They'll deny the infidelity. They deny that they did this. Set that house on fire and make sure they're nice and safe because they know better. That's one thing you need to know. They know better. They thought it wasn't wrong. If they did not know better, they would not hide. They would not lie. They would not go out of town. They would not change the alias. They would not buy another phone. They would not be doing things secretly. They won't have to go in late to do, go in early to do it, stay late to do it. They won't have to be lying to you and saying, hey, I'm going to a store and they know they're going somewhere else. They would not tell you, hey, I've got a business trip when they're really going off for the weekend with somebody else. Those pastors and those people that do nasty things to you behind closed doors, but play innocent in front of other people. They do that because they know their actions are wrong. And again, they're not going to tolerate their own behavior. So that's why they keep certain type of people around them. Stooges, jellybacks, spongebobs, weak people. Simon says participants, they are going to keep those type of people around them because they will not tolerate anyone else who's going to speak the truth, who's going to have an opinion, who's going to have a, a different point of view, who may not agree, who is going to say, hey, I'm going to seek God for myself, who's going to say, I'll pray about it. They're not going to just stay there and take what they said. I'll pray about it. I'll say, you know what? I saw the Lord about it and that just does not bear witness with my spirit. Oh, that's going to be a problem. So I know I gave you a bunch of different scenarios today, but I really want to tie it back to what I'm saying here. You know, the things that I spoke about, even though it may seem like it's not quite what I started off with, it does. Because they often tend to have a very conflicting and they're conflicting of behavior. 
What they say don't match their actions. Their actions does not match what they say. They live according to a whole different standard for themselves and not for others. And truly, no, they're not going to tolerate their own behaviors. They would not because they know how they are. That's why they hide. That's why they lie. That's why they deceive. But if you allow them to behave that way, and if you allow them to do that, they see they did one thing. They see that they disrespected you and they have you conditioned to come back. They have you conditioned that you're going to apologize first. They have you conditioned that they can hurt you and disrespect you in front of your family and children, behave poorly, cuss you out, take things, wreck things. And you are going, all they have to say, sorry, and you're going to be back. They're going to continue that way. But you have to break that cycle. Because the same behaviors and the things that they do and the abuse, you have to also look at yourself and say, I allow this. I allow this behavior. Because you think love means you stay. You think love, you think forgiveness means I forgive you and let you punch me in my face again. No. If you're that way, you're going to be such a wreck. And you'll find yourself, if you have children, you're going to be carrying out what is called displacement because they frustrate you. You're going to be frustrated with your own children. You, because they cause tension and, and wreck your day and ruin your day and have you so upset, you come in and you'll be complaining about everything your children does. You can't afford to info, carry that seed of hurt because what's, what's happening is you're setting up the same atmosphere in your house. You may not do exactly like they're doing to you or these individuals are doing to you, but hurt and pain blind you and you will create an atmosphere that hurts others who has done nothing to you. And you'll be so hurt and in so much pain that you can't accept true love when it comes because you're bitter. You're entitled. Ain't no man going to do this to me. Ah, la, la, la. And I'm telling you all. Oh. And so what you're doing is someone that really loves and cares for you as a friend or so as a potential partner, you can't deal with that because they can't really have a relationship with you because now you're coming in. You have all that hurt and pain in you. And you begin to destroy others around you. So don't fall into their traps. Don't fall into their lies of I didn't know. They knew. They knew what they were doing when they were packing for the weekend. They knew what they were doing when they lied to you and said that's just a friend when it was not. They know exactly what they're doing when they were sneaking and taking things out of your house. They knew exactly what they were doing when they wrecked the vehicle and pretended like they didn't do it. They know exactly what they're doing when they lie to you and give you the sob story so that you can take out a loan and give it to them. That's why they lie. That's why they talk about you behind your back. That's why they deny things when you talk to them about it. Because they know the right things. Every last human has a conscience. Whether they believe in God or not, they have a conscience. People that don't want to believe in God, when they're doing wrong, there is a knowing within them that says you shouldn't. And the way you know they know they shouldn't is because that's when they get to sneaking. That's when they get to tipping. That's when they take their shoes off and walk softly across the house. Because that knowing within them says it's wrong. That's why they, they have to not answer the phone. That's why they can't do it. Because everything in them lets them know what they're doing is wrong. That's why they have to play head games with you. That's why they have to turn the story. That's why they have to have an attitude. They have to find something to get out the house. They have to find one thing so they can argue with you and take off and not come home for three days. And come back and play the game and switch it because everything in them, the light of Christ, whether they want to believe in God or not, shows them you're doing something wrong, wrong, wrong. But rather than change that behavior, they learn how to walk slowly. They learn how to, to slip underneath the door. They know how to turn into Elastigirl and, a, and Plastic Man and they know how to turn the lock slowly. They know how to go through the side of the door like a loose leaf paper. They know how to limbo outside the window without getting caught because they choose to be this way. They choose to be crooked. They choose to be unrighteous. They choose to, to, to run after mischief. And then they turn around and try to look at you and say, I don't know. I don't understand. They understand because they work hard to keep up the facade. It takes a lot of work to 
put a pole by the side of your house the 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 earlier in the day so that you can pole vault over the fence like a ninja at night. That's what these people are doing. It takes a lot to keep cheating, get an STD night, got to make an appointment, do all these different things. And then they're going to tell their spouse, I don't know what happened to you. It must be that soap you're using. You know how much it takes? Ah, it must be that lotion. You must, uh, It's the lotion. It must be the washcloth. I read an article. Yeah, I read an article that committee is going around on these washcloths. Yeah, up in Coles. Coles got a, a, a committee of outbreak on the washcloths. I don't know. It must be something in the factories. Do you know how much time and insanity it takes to lie this way? But they'll go with it and look at you seriously. Knowing they just had to steam off all those boils on their private part. Had a fight with you so they didn't sleep with you for a while that, while they're taking their medications. But God allow you to see that. And now she's, she's trying to play you. I haven't been nowhere. Yes, you have. You have the imprint of Jimmy, John, James, Mr. Earl, Mr. Ernest, and, and, uh, and Mr. Woodrow down the street, all inside your, all their DNA is in there. They left a shoe in there. But that woman will come and lie to you and play mind games with you. <laughs> Guys, you got to be smart. And when you're believing the Lord, it's not about being silly and, 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 not, and being unwise. You have to use discernment. And one thing you know for sure, the behavior that they are giving to you, they wouldn't tolerate it. They wouldn't tolerate themselves, but you will. And that's the part of the problem. It's time to grow, guys. It's time to grow in Christ. It's time to walk in wisdom so that you can walk in your purpose without hindrance and heartbreak and pain. You've got to keep your eyes straight and fixed on the things of God, but you're not going to be able to do this while carrying dead weight. All right, guys. God bless.